Hi folks, welcome to Upanor. I'm Dan Hubbard, customer trainer at the Upanor North American facility. Thank you for joining us today. And, and I am Steve Swanson, national trainer at Upanor. I think you found that in the parking lot. We line. should do a sound check first uh, to get that. Hello Facebook Live, you're listening to the sounds of Dan in the afternoon. Yeah, everybody got that? <laughs> okay. Hey, how many clicked off on that yesterday? All right. All right. What are anyway, we talking about today? Today we're going to do radiant cooling because radiant heating would be dumb to talk about because it's 90 degrees outside. Yeah, but radiant cooling is a hot topic. Hot so, topic. Hot topic in the HVAC industry it is, is cooling. And so we're going to talk a little bit about radiant cooling, how it works, what makes it work, and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, uh, we can we can talk about how it works and we can go over some yeah. rules of thumb. Um, but then and then we'll we'll point them to some actual. Right. Real data and how to actually how to design a system. We're not going to go how to, through the how to design, but you'll give, we'll give you the resources. We'll give you a you place need. to go find it. So that'll be good. So the first thing we'll learn is in our in our world we actually don't make cooling because there's no in the world of physics there's no such thing as cold. There's just the absence of heat. So we don't make cooling. We remove heat, like dark and light. There's no such thing as dark. Like you can't buy a dark light where you go down to the oh. hardware store and you push a button and a beam of dark comes up, right? <laughs> I need some more dark in here. Give me the dark give light. Give me the dark light, right. So you can only make light and right. you can only make heat. And we're going to remove heat and that's how we're going to do it. We're just and moving we, heat around. And what, how we okay. do that is we use this particular thing. This obviously represents hot. Hot. Because it's red. And this obviously is cold because it's blue and the thing is hot always flows to cold no matter how we do it it's always trying to equalize itself out we can take advantage of that to move heat out and feel cooler right okay so cold like henry winkler yeah Shoo. like the fonts he's cool oh, he's cool <laughs> all right so first thing we need to do let, we'll talk a little bit about uh, radiant cooling because we have some things called temperature that we have to be concerned about. Okay. So the, let's start at, uh, oops, we'll start at 32 degrees where nothing's freezing and we'll go up to 212 degrees where it turns to... Well, it can turn to steam. It off. can. But right here it's still a liquid. Liquid water. And here it's a vapor at 212 degrees. Now, because we're going to talk about this because radiant cooling will not do all, of, won't remove all of the heat. It'll only remove a part of it. And so this part right here is the only part that radiant cooling can remove. Well, we're calling this uh, measurable heat. Measurable heat. Any, measurable or sensible. Any heat that causes a change in a thermometer's reading is called measurable heat because you can measure it. But there is a 212 where it's a liquid. Spelling. All right. And then there's a 212 where it's a vapor. It's identically the same amount. But this is this heat is all hidden in the vapor. So we call that latent. It's from the Latin word hidden. So now you've had your Latin lesson for today. Okay. So it takes, if I take a one pound of water and raise it from 32 to 212, I need 180 BTUs. That's one BTU for every degree. For every degree. And if I'm moving the same pound of water from liquid to vapor, it takes 970.4 BTUs to get it to do exactly the same thing. Just to get it to change state. Just to change state. So this is what we call humidity. This, is, this part over here is what humidity is. And we have to remove that as well, because you know what it's like to be in a house where it's, the temperature's cool, but there's a lot of humidity. It feels cold and clammy. So we have to remove this humidity as well. So this is water attached to a balloon because it's, it's humidity is just water in the air, right? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. Okay. So let's draw a house. Let's draw a house, okay. Let's make some, can we make some room here? Yeah, sure. All right. Everybody got that? All right. So we can only remove the measurable temperature using radiant coolant. If you didn't get that, you can go back later and we'll wind, rewind, rewind it, it. And capture those notes. Okay, so draw, draw a house. How, house. How detailed do I have to be here? You need more than that? <laughs> That's okay. Draw a house. You need like 
A room? A room. Okay. It needs a window. And it needs a window. Right. We can do this. All right. So um, we'll go a little bit bigger. So this is, I'm going to put a slab in here. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do you need? A back wall? I need a two-week vacation. Okay. <laughs> Time <laughs> off from Dan. All right. Here's my back wall. Okay. So do we have a window in there? We'll throw the window right here? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do that. So here's my big window letting a lot of sunlight in, right? It is letting a lot of sun in. Here's a problem that we're going to have. Shiny with. Here. we got to do this upright. Okay, there we go. That's we, our window. We have an issue called solar gain. So when a window is facing into the sunlight, that two kinds of solar energy come in. There's the, uh, the short wave, a long wave like this, and then the short wave ones like that. Now the long wave ones, when they hit the glass, they'll just reflect off and they're gone. But the short wave ones, they make it down and they hit the floor and then they re-radiate as long wave again. So now they're long wave. And then it goes and hits the wall and warms the wall up. So, so the temperature of this wall is, is going up as... As the sunlight reflects off the flooring and goes into there. And then the floor is going to absorb some of that sunlight too. And it is, well, and it's okay. going to make another heater down and here. And it's heating it, heating right. the space too. Okay. Here's where, this is where radiant cooling shines. Because if we, we look, Dan, you know the, what radiant cooling is capable of doing, typically. If, if we have a 78 degree supply water temperature, it's capable of removing about 14 BTUs per hour per square foot. But solar gain, now we've got a whole other thing. It'll remove up to 32 BTUs per hour per square foot of solar gain. That's a lot. So if it's hot at nighttime, no sun shining in, it's going to be about 12 to 14 BTUs 12 to 14. per hour per square foot. Right. But with the sunlight hitting this, so I'm going to draw some tubes, and hopefully the audience can see this. There's tubes in the floor now. Yeah. So as this short wave radiation hits that floor, that radiant cooling system pulls, pulls all of that right down. Pulls it right into okay. there. And it just carries it out here and evacuates it out the back of the house, and away it goes through a, the cooling system. Okay, so that's you. You said you said um, you, we want about seventy-eight degrees in the house for cooling. That mm -hmm. means my panel down here is going to be somewhere around what 60, 60, 68? 68, somewhere in there. So my supply water temperature is going to be somewhere in the high, maybe high fifty. Okay, well, what's so it? now? Won't that? Condense and when I have a wet floor, you know, we get that question a we lot. We get that here. a lot. We, so we talk, we talk about radiant cooling in the classes here at Upanor when you come to Upanor Academy for radiant class or for um, for anything else. Radiant cooling seems to always come up when we're talking hydronics. And the biggest question is, isn't a cooling system like that going to condense? Um, and you and know, then it, you'd have a puddle of water right on your floor. You do get condensation, like let's say you take a glass of ice cold water and you put it on your table, you're going to mm -hmm. get condensation, even at, um, even at pretty moderate humidities, like 50% right. humidity. Um, you're going to see that. And so the, the, the mindset is that when I have something cold in a room that has moderate humidity, I'm going to get condensation right. on, that, on that object. And then they think it'll just go, the floor will be the same thing. But we're talking high temperature cooling. So we want panel right. surface temperature somewhere between, let's say, 60, um, 65 and 70 degrees. 70 at, degrees. Now, at that temperature... At, let's say at that, at that temperature, with 50% humidity, you're looking at a dew point of somewhere around 55, 55 to 60 56. degrees. It's In not going to condense. So we're nowhere near that number. And they have thermostats now that can measure relative humidity in the room. And all we have to do is set it so that the water temperature is always two degrees above the dew point. Voila, so you no can, condensation. Yeah, you can solve condensation just in the control the system. And even right. if you don't have a control system to handle condensation, it's going to be very difficult to make that floor condense. You're going to really have to try to make it, it happen. And so, it, like, radiant cooling has been around a really long time. Large corporations have been using it for decades. So this isn't a new technology. Uh, they, the equipment to do this is already out there. It's tied, tested. So let's talk about some of the different things we'd have to talk about for designing it. Like okay. What, 
what did we do differently as we designed? Well, in a cooling system, um, to, to handle comfort, we have to worry about the water temperature going out to the tubes that are in the slab. Okay, so okay. we have to worry about that water temperature. Not only, not only the temperature going out, but the temperature returning. Mm -hmm. So when we do radiant heating, we do sometimes a 10 degree uh, temperature difference between the supply water temperature and the return water temperature. Mm -hmm. In commercial, we, do, we go all the way up to 20 up degrees. Up to 20 degrees, so we'll 10 to 20 degree delta T. But for cooling, you want somewhere around five degrees for your for your temperature difference from your supply water temperature to your return water temperature coming back. Uh, this is going to help you maximize the amount of heat that that can Duck. absorb. Now, with that temperature change, it means that your your water is going to have to be moving a lot faster in order to keep those narrow margins. So your gallons per minute is going to go up, and so is your friction loss. So um, you're going to have to have bigger circulators or bigger tubing. But one th that's exactly right. So we can compensate by that from switching from half inch tubing to 5 8 inch tubing to help do that. So good rule of thumb when you're, when you're thinking about um, how to incorporate cooling into a building is first look at the tubing size. 5 8 tubing Five is pretty good for cooling. So I've seen 5 8 or 3 quarter yeah. as, a, as, the, uh, as the benchmark. And this keeps your circulators small and cuts down on your energy consumption over the lifetime of the system. And then we shorten the loop lengths and we'll make those 300 feet long for 5 8 tubing. Usually in heating we run them up to 450 feet, but at 300 feet it makes your pump work less and so you're not spending as much energy on the pump as well. So we make 300 foot loops, 5 8 inch tubing, this, and then, well, this 300 feet is not going to cover the same 300 feet that half-inch tubing would in a heating system. Because You're, well, the main reason is that you have to get a narrower spacing on your tubing. So not 12 inches on center. We have, we're talking somewhere around 6 inches on center for the tubing spacing. So um, 6 inches on center. The, uh, so this is, right now, if you're, if you're watching and you've never done a cooling system, you're crunching the numbers in your head and you're saying these costs are adding up. But a cooling system designed right is going to pay for itself over the we'll lifetime it. of the building. So if you do it right the first time, you won't have to worry about ongoing yes. costs of air conditioning or stuff like that. And that's the thing, like uh, some of our uh, commercial people have installed radiant cooling in their commercial applications and one particular retailer who built um, large retail stores, used to have 26 air handling units up on the roof. By switching to radiant cooling, they went from 26 to 13 air handling units to do exactly the same job. Now, why would they still need air handling units if they're doing heating and cooling in the slab? That's what, the only problem we have to get rid of, remember, was that latent heat. Okay. So we still have to dehumidify. So that would be the job of the air handling units. Okay, and so take care of that. Yep, you can use air handling units, or if you're if you're wanting to do a, a building with a dedicated outdoor air system, you could take care of the humidity that way as right. well. Lots uh, of different ways to do that. The the biggest thing, the, I think I think the biggest roadblock to cooling uh, in our country is that we're so used to using forced air for heating and cooling. Right. And uh, DOAS is great because it decouples the comfort system from the fresh air system. So all of your ducts for that building, they now become much smaller, much smaller. to supply the, uh, the outside yeah. air to the occupants. And because we're not pushing as much air into the building, now the humidity control is a lot easier because we don't have to dehumidify as much air it either. Is. So we, want to, we also have to be a little bit more concerned. Remember, we're going to try to remove that energy down through the floor. So floor covering will make a difference. If you're going to use real thick carpeting and padding, that's going to hinder the efficiency of the radiant cooling it's, job. It's going to work a lot harder, or you might have to drive those, those temperatures for your, um, for your cooling system way down. And that's where you would, that's where that's you where would you start to risk the, the, uh, the condensation by the colder you bring that supply water temperature to get through that carpet. So uh, for a cooling system, uh, slabs work really well. And they do some beautiful stuff with stamped and stained concrete. So as a as a low cost alternative to even having a flooring finish on there, you could you could stain concrete and uh, and have that as your floor finish. And actually at Upinor we have a lot of stained concrete. You wouldn't know that it wasn't. Uh, uh, a, lots of ways to do know, it. Tile that works superb. Stone Tile's works good. great. And you can put your cooling in your ceiling. It is actually more efficient being in the ceiling. So there's options there as well. Now we can't go into all of that today, Dan, mm -hmm. but we can refer you back to 
This is a free document you can download at upanorpro.com, and this is called Radiant Cooling Design Manual, and you can, uh, you can find this on our website under Tech Support, and then Downloads, and you'll see, it, you'll see you can download this, and then you can print this out or just keep it as an electronic copy. In here is all the information you'd need from all the way from uh, planning to design to installation to troubleshooting all in one well-organized manual. I agree. There it I is. Agree. Okay. And you know what? We would really love to hear what part of the world you're in. So if you wouldn't take, mind taking just a minute to type in what state you're from, we would love to hear where, where you all are from. Yeah, and you got about 30 seconds. So if there are anything that popped into your head while you're listening, any questions that you have, please, uh, please ask now. And our, uh, our fabulous camera woman will be sure to let us know what those questions are. She is. We'd be glad to answer them. And then, uh, you can get a hold of us at Upanor. So you can, uh, my address is steve.swanson at upanor.com. You're sharing that with the world? Sure. I'm Don't. not afraid. Columbus took a chance. Look how well he did. Don't share mine, but if you can't figure out what my email address is just by looking at Steve's, you're probably in the wrong industry. All right. Let me give you Dan's home phone number because that's what I find is the easiest way. And it's always home after midnight. No, I probably shouldn't do that. No, at 5 o'clock, my phone rolls over to Steve, so go ahead. All right. So, so if uh, there are no questions. Okay. Well, hey, uh, it was good having you guys here. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, you, you know you guys know where to get a hold of us. Go to upanorpro.com. We're uh, there. We're there. Uh, stay cool, Facebook Live. Thanks, and goodbye.